so it'll get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. The the big Deep Seek R1 release freaked everybody out because of the cheaper. One of the manifestations of that is Nvidia stock plummeted. Uh, can you explain what happened? I mean, and also just explain this moment and whether, you know, if, if Nvidia is gonna keep winning. We're both Nvidia bulls here, I would say. And in some ways the market response is reasonable. Most of the market, like. NVIDIA's biggest com customers in the US are major tech companies, and they're spending a ton on AI. And if a simple in interpretation of DeepSeek is you can get really good models without spending as much on AI. Mm -hmm. So in that capacity, it's like, oh, maybe these big tech companies won't need to spend as much on AI and go down. Mm -hmm. The actual thing that happened is much more complex where there's social factors, where there's the rising in the app store, the social contagion that is happening. And then the, I think a lot of some of it is just like, I'm not, a, I don't trade. I don't know anything about financial markets, but it builds up over the weekend where the social pressure, where it's like, if it was during the week and there was multiple days of trading when this was really becoming, but it comes on the weekend and then everybody wants to sell. And then that is a social contagion. I think, I think, and like, there were a lot of false narratives, which is like, hey, these guys are spending billions on models, right? And they're not spending billions on models. No one spent more than a billion dollars on a model that's released publicly, right? GPT-4 was a couple hundred million, and then you know they've reduced the cost with 4.0, 4 Turbo 4.0, right? Um, but billion-dollar model runs are coming, right? Mm -hmm. um, this concludes pre-training and post-training, right? And then the other number is like, hey, DeepSeek didn't include everything, right? They didn't include, you know, a lot of the cost goes to research and all this sort of stuff. A lot of the cost goes to inference. A lot of the cost goes to post-training. None of these things were factored. Yeah. It's research salaries, right? Like all these th things are like counted in the billions of dollars that OpenAI is spending, but they weren't counted in the, you know, hey, six million, five million dollars that DeepSeek spent, right? So, but so there's a bit of misunderstanding of what these numbers are, um, and then there's also an element of NVIDIA has just been a straight line up, right? And and there's been so many different narratives that have been trying to push down NVIDIA. Not, I don't say push down NVIDIA stock. Everyone is looking for a reason to sell or mm -hmm. to be worried, right? Um, you know, it was it's, it was Blackwell delays, right? Their GPU was, you know, there's a lot of report. Every two weeks, there's a new report about their GPUs being delayed. Um, there's... Um, there's the whole thing about scaling laws ending, right? It's so it's so ironic, right? It lasted a it month. Was, <laughs> it was it was just it was just like literally just hey, models aren't getting better, right? They're just not getting better. There's no reason to spend more. Pre-training scaling is dead, and then it's like o one, o three, right? R one, uh, R one, right? And now it's like wait, models are getting too. They're progressing too fast. Slow down the progress. Stop spending on GPUs, right? Yeah. And it's, but you know the funniest thing I think that like comes out of this is Javon's paradox is true, right? AWS pricing for H100s has gone up over the last couple of weeks, right? Since uh, since 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 a uh, little bit after Christmas, since V3 was launched, AWS H100 pricing has gone up. H200s are like almost out of stock everywhere because it you know H200 has more memory and therefore R1 like you know wants that chip over H100, right? We were trying to get GPUs on a short notice this week for a demo and it wasn't that easy. We were trying to get just like 16 or 32 H100s for a demo and it was not very easy. <laughs> so for people who don't know Javon's par paradox is uh when uh you know the efficiency goes up somehow magically counterintuitively, the total resource consumption goes up as well. Right. And semiconductors is, you know, we're, we're, we're at 50 years of Moore's law. Every two years, half the cost, double the transistors, just like clockwork. And it's slowed down, obviously, but like the semiconductor industry has gone up the whole time, right? They've, it's been wavy, right? There's obviously cycles and stuff. And I don't expect AI to be any different, right? There's going to be ebbs and flows, but this is in AI, it's just playing out at an insane timescale, right? It was 2x every two years. This is 1200x in like three years. Right. So it's like the, the scale of improvement that is like hard to get, wrap your head around. Yeah. I was confused because I, to me, NVIDIA stock on that should have gone up, but maybe it went down because there's kind of suspicion of foul play on the side of China, something like this. But if you just look purely at the actual principles at play here, like it's obvious. Yeah. The Javon's the more paradox. The progress that AI makes or the higher the derivative of AI progress is, especially you should, because NVIDIA is in the best place. The higher the derivative is, the sooner the market's going to be bigger and expanding and NVIDIA is the only one that does yeah, everything reliably right now. Because it's not like an NVIDIA competitor arose. 
it's it's another company that's using NVIDIA. Who so, historically has been a large NVIDIA customer. Yeah. <laughs> as, and has <laughs> press releases about them cheering about being China's biggest NVIDIA customer, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, it may... It may it, obviously, they've quieted down, but like, I, I think that's like another element of it is that they don't want to say how many GPUs they have. Yeah. Because... Hey, they yes, they have H eight hundreds. Yes, they have H twenties. They also have some H one hundreds, right? Which so are smuggled in. Can you speak to that? To the smuggling? What's the scale of smuggling that's feasible for a nation state to do for companies? Is it possible to? I think I think there's a few angles of smuggling here, right? One is ByteDance arguably is the largest smuggler of GPUs for China, right? China's not supposed to have GPUs. ByteDance has like over 500,000 GPUs. Why? Because they're all rented from companies around the world. They rent from Oracle, they rent from Google, they rent from all these mass and, and a bunch of smaller cloud companies too, right? All the neo clouds, right, of the world. They rent so, so many GPUs. They also buy a bunch, right? And, and they do this for mostly like what Meta does, right? Serving TikTok, right? Serving next best, <laughs> right? same, discussion. As, same, as, same as Meta, right? To be clear, <laughs> yeah. that's today the view, use, right? And yeah. it's a valid use, right? Hack the dopamine circuit, right? Um, now, that's that's theoretically now very much restricted with the AI diffusion rules, which happened in the last week of the Biden admin and uh, Trump admin looks like they're going to keep them, which limits like allies, even like Singapore, um, which Singapore is like 20% of NVIDIA's, 20, 30% of NVIDIA's revenue. But uh, Singapore's had a memoratorium on not building data centers for like 15 years because they don't have enough power. So where are they going? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not claiming they're all going to China, right? But a portion are, you know, many are going to Malaysia, um, including Microsoft and Oracle have big data centers in Malaysia. Like, you know, all they're going all over Southeast Asia, probably India as well, right? Like there's stuff routing, but like, the diffusion rules are very de facto, like you can only buy this many GPUs from this country and it's and you can only rent a cluster this large to companies that are Chinese, right? Like they're very explicit on trying to stop smuggling, right? And a big chunk of it was, hey, let's, let's you know, random company buy 16 servers, ships them to, uh, to, to China, right? Um, there's actually, I, I saw a photo from someone uh, in the semiconductor industry who's an, who's an, who leads like a... A, a team for like networking chips uh, that competes with NVIDIA. And he sent a photo of a guy checking into a first class United flight from San Francisco to, sh to Shanghai or Shenzhen with a, a super micro box that was this big, <laughs> which can only contain GPUs, right? And he was booking first class because think about it, three to 5K for your first class ticket, Server cost, you know, 240,000 in the US, 250,000. You sell it for 300,000 in China. Wait, you just got a free first class ticket yeah. and a a lot more money. So it's like, right. you know, and, and, and that's like small scale smuggling. Most of the large scale smuggling is like companies in Singapore and Malaysia, like routing them around or renting GPUs uh, completely uh, legally. I, I want to jump in. How much is the scale? I think there's been some number, like some people that are higher level economics understanding say that it's like as you go from 1 billion of smuggling to 10 billion, it's like you're hiding certain levels of economic activity. And that's the most reasonable thing to me is that there's going to be some level where it's so obvious that it's easier to find this economic activity. And yeah, so 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 my 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 belief is that last year roughly uh so so NVIDIA made a million H20s, which are legally allowed to be shipped to China, which we talked about is better for reasoning, right? Inference at least. Um not maybe not tra not training, but reasoning inference. Um and inference generally. Then they also had, you know, a couple hundred thousand, we think like two hundred to three hundred thousand GPUs were routed to China from, you know, Singapore, Malaysia, US, wherever. Companies spawn up by 16 GPUs, 64 GPUs, whatever it is, route it. And Huawei is known for having spent up a massive network of like companies to get the materials they need after they were banned in like 2018. So it's not like otherworldly. Uh, but I agree, right? Nathan's point is like, hey, you can't smuggle up $10 billion of GPUs. Uh, and then the third sort of source, which is just now banned and, you know, which wasn't considered smuggling, but is China is renting, like, is, I, I, I believe from our research, right? Oracle's biggest GPU customer is ByteDance, right? And 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 for Google, I think it's their second biggest customer, right? And so like, and you go down the list of clouds, and especially these smaller cloud companies that aren't like the hyperscalers, right? Um, think beyond Core, even Lambda, even there's a whole C, there's 60 different new cloud companies serving NVIDIA GPUs. I think ByteDance is renting a lot of these, right? Um, all over it, right? And so these companies are renting GPUs to Chinese companies, and that's complete. That was completely legal 
up until the diffusion rules, which happened just a few weeks ago. And even now you can rent GPU clusters that are less than 2000 GPUs, or you can buy GPUs and ship them wherever you want if you're, if they're less than 1500 GPUs, right? So it's like, there are still like some ways to smuggle, but yeah, it's not, you know, as the numbers grow, right? Uh, you know, a hundred something billion dollars of revenue for NVIDIA last year, 200 something billion this year, right? And if next year are, you know, it, 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 could, it could it could nearly double again or more than double, right? Based on like what we see with data center footprints like being built out all across the US and the rest of the world. It's going to be really hard for China to keep up with these rules, right? Yes, there will always be smuggling um, and deep seek level models of GPT-4 level models, uh, O1 level models capable to train on what China can get, even the next tier above that. But if we speed run a couple more, you know, jumps, right, you know, to billion dollar models, $10 billion models, then it becomes, you know, hey, there is a compute disadvantage for China for training models and serving them. And and the, the serving part is really critical, right? DeepSeek cannot serve their model today, right? It's it's completely out of inventory. Uh, it's already started falling in the app store, actually, downloads, because you download it, you try and sign up, they say we're not taking registrations because they have no capacity, right? You open it up, you get like less than two, five tokens per second if you even get your request approved, right? Because there's just no capacity because they just don't have enough GPUs to serve the model, even though it's incredibly efficient. It would be fascinating to watch the smuggling because I mean, there's drug smuggling, right? That's a that's a market. There's weapons smuggling, and GPUs will surpass that at some point. Chips are highest value per kilogram, probably by far. <laughs> um, uh, 